Hey guys, what's up? Aru. So, Kosalor, since 4.0 is basically the next patch, why don't I take the liberty of gushing about how cool she might be? So, welcome to another video of me entertaining you to save my life. This video is gonna be a speculative video of Fosalor's kit, style of play, and overall possible combat design. Now, I'd like to preface that this video does not have any leaks, nor will I be talking about leaks. We'll simply be using known mobs, characters, events, and even phenomena, picking out traits and abilities, and creating our perfect copium filled Hydro Archon God of Justice. We'll be sticking with the classic Archon trend of being more support oriented than a straight up damage dealer. And the best support aspect that I could think of for Hydro, based on the lore we know, is healing and survivability. Honestly, I could have just done this in my head, but making a video out of my Hydro infused insanity is far more fun and I want to hear you guys' thoughts on Focalore too. This video will have two main segments, one for Genshin itself and the other from the Honkai games which will be on the timestamps below, so just pick and choose whichever, and let's get started. Starting with the mobs and enemies of Genshin, the most annoying form of Hydro that everyone hates, but also wants to use. The Rite of Mortal Water, or the Bubbly Offering, is by far one of the most annoying gimmicks that the Abyss has, solely made to ridicule your ability to dodge the slowest and biggest of projectiles in battle. Not only is it slow, it's also a homing ability, and getting caught in it allows the Abyss Mage to dance and ridicule you even more. If Fosalor possesses any form of ability like this, then we'll have the the perfect root ability outside of freezing and Zhongli's ultimate. To avoid making freeze irrelevant or power crept, maybe allow the enemies to still attack within the bubble, similar to the cryo root and the mirror maiden's root ability. Maybe let them take damage while in the bubble too, or allow other elemental reactions to be buffed in some way. This still follows the trend that Archons are more in line with supporting than straight up damaging. We haven't had another CC heavy type character since Venti, so maybe Focalore could could be an alternative and maybe open a different form of crowd control. Next are Hydro Infusions, which we can see from the Abyss Herald and the Serpent Knights. Maybe a Hydro Infused form similar to Child or an area affecting infusion like Chong Yun's. The movements and animations will of course be up to Hoyo's prerogative. We can also maybe insert Elemental Infused Shielding too. An Elemental Shield, likely Hydro, that may offer reduced damage like Saint Cho's Barrier or create a form of health regen while taking damage like Shinobu's. But the more damage one takes, maybe the more healing they get when the shield breaks off until the duration ends. This is also similar to the Linebreaker Knight's ability to heal after hitting a shield, but we're doing it backwards. However, seeing an ability that sacrifices HP to then heal allies could also be an interesting take. For offense, maybe the more Fosalor can heal, the more damage she can do. And for defense, the more damage she takes, the more she can heal. From the Fatui mobs, we have the Mirror Maidens and the Hydro Skirmishers. Fosalor's form of healing could be a cleansing bubble that other characters can go to to heal and maybe even cleanse themselves. Since the previous Hydro Archon could cleanse even the Abyss, then having a form of cleanse for a longer duration could be a great way to avoid those pesky elemental debuffs and especially the bleed. Imagine if you could negate Abyss Wolf bleeds and that Cryo Domain's slow from freeze. Or maybe decrease the cooldown for skills if your character does indeed take that cleanse bubble, allowing characters like Child to take advantage of a decrease in skill cooldown. The skill cooldown wouldn't be as great as his C6 refresh, but it would be enough to improve his gameplay and flexibility as a C0 character. The Mirror Maiden's Refraction or Bailu's Invigoration status is something I could see Fosalor having as well. If you didn't know, Refraction causes Mirror Maidens to enter polarized states, which makes them immune to interruption and vacuum effects. For Focalore, maybe polarized state is applied as long as there are enemies inflicted with refraction in the field. Characters, or maybe only Focalore herself, take less damage, are immune to stagger and stun, and have increased damage for the duration of the skill. Maybe this refraction can also be a prompt to create a bubble cage, similar to Kaveh's detonation effect with Dendro Blooms. Anyone with refraction can be caged as long as Focalore's is the one to hit them. You can see where I'm going with this CC heavy oriented character. For the last segment of mobs, we'll go over polymorphing and transformation. 
Oceanids can take on humanoid forms. Seeing Farina and Nuvolet is a green light for characters that possibly transform. Granted, Zhongli is half dragon and Chi Lin, Poseidon could actually be the first, maybe turning into an Oceanid as her ultimate, or have dragon-like limbs and stealing elements for a short time like the Vishaps could, maybe even create clones of herself like the Osile has multiple heads. Something like Imbibitor Lune, but if Fosalor dies in battle, she comes back in a different form. One for damage, and one for sustain and defense. Which means letting her fall in battle can give a better return of investment. Of course, it won't count as falling in battle. Similar to Hu Tao and Shinobu C6, where they don't exactly die right away, but Fosalors gets a full heal and a sort of buffed state. Maybe she has a dragon ultimate form, but I won't cope that far. Other abilities like transforming attacks from the hypostasis could create different skill types. Press for one ability type and hold for another, but then maybe press and hold again for a different end elemental skill. One for more damage reduction or damage buff, and the other for instant damage or maybe a charged heal based on the damage taken. Summoning can also be a thing for Focalore. A summon like Mona's or Kokomi's that hits enemies and heals the character on the field, or creating multiple summons that do damage like Yae Miko's turrets. Maybe a banner like Goro or Dea that reduces damage or allows other characters to heal all of their hits. Lastly, slimes. I just hope the summon is a slime. Moving on, we have other Hydro characters. I've mentioned a few other characters already, but I'll go into other characters and details here. Starting with Barbara's elemental skill that heals per hit. Maybe Fosalor could toggle between damage and healing, or toggling from shield to damage reduction. Reviving teammates could also be a thing, but you're not supposed to let characters die anyway. Unless that's Fosalor's gimmick. She could also probably be the Archon form of Sing Cho, but I highly doubt that considering we already have Yelan. Not comparing them, by the way. Fosalor could straight up be a combination of both. A Hydro big damage turret with a damage reduction shield. Hopefully that's not the case because I already have both. Mona's gliding is debatable, but I wouldn't mind. What I do mind is her ultimate, which is the epitome of one-hit kills. Hopefully her kit isn't focused on one-hitting targets and more on consistent damage. Unless her ultimate is set for healing instead of damage. One big heal after doing certain damage to enemies, similar to Eula's, which could work well with Mirror Maiden's refraction and polarized state. Reduce damage, more damage, and you keep hitting enemies until your ultimate pops off and heals the entire team. Ayato's Water Illusion would be interesting if this was her kit creating clones and moving them around to do damage, moving in unison and copying Focalorz's attacks and skills, with her ultimate destroying all clones and dealing AoE damage. For a supportive role, the clones could be for taunting and taking aggro from mobs, while of course dealing damage, which works well when defending something or someone from enemy attacks. And when a clone falls, the team gets a buff, a heal, a shield, or cleanse and immunity. This also makes her ultimate a bit simpler. One big clone explosion. Tartalia's stance changes is a mechanic or playstyle that I want to see more in the game. And maybe Hoyo can integrate that into Fosalor as a switch from heal to damage stance. Improving upon Tartalia's rarely used bow stance and giving Fosalor a stance changing mechanic from support to DPS as a great transition depending on what type of build characters can make. Or maybe press to change stance and hold to simply heal or cleanse with some damage. And her ultimate also changes depending on her stance, either massive damage or massive team heal and maybe even a revive. Now let me get this out of my system. Forina is Sin Mal and you can't change my mind. Sin Mal is officially in Genshin Impact. I've talked about wanting Sin Mal in Genshin in my Fosalor video and finally I can say that Sin Mal is in fact Focalore. Back to the video, Sin Mal to my understanding is quite similar to Sele. Basically Sin Mal also has a stigmata, the chaotic timepiece, that formed inside her after being beaten up by her parents. Yeah, and it speaks to her like Veliona does to Sele, but it wasn't visible like normal stigma. She can't control her stigma and power too, so she's a bit unstable. Here's to seeing the unstable side of Farina in 4.0. Her power from GGZ revolve around time and clockwork aesthetics, along with perma stunning and one-hitting you and making you do the entire run again. 
This fits well with Fontaine's currently declining clockwork power source. So time manipulation, like freezing enemies in place, or reducing cooldowns, or maybe creating heals based on how long you get hit or not get hit. Next is Mobius, who uses her regenerative power, which Archons seem to have based on Nahida and the power of a fallen Honkai beast, which in Genshin could be from a fallen god, the previous Hydro Archon. Farina has heterochromia, so she might have a mix of both her own and something else's power, which also works with stance change playstyles. One side of her power for offense and the other for defense abilities. Transforming into a Honkai beast or an Oceanid could be her ultimate form, but a burst related kit would mean that she needs energy, and we've seen other characters needing batteries for, which is counterintuitive to her supportive kit, but hopefully she can get her ultimate quicker than usual. Something I want Fosara to have from Sally's kit is her quantum abilities. Teleport and morphing to different locations and creating different forms, manipulating quantum itself or water, in Focolore's case, to her will. It would also be a great segue into astrology and the stars for Focolore's lore on Celestia and forbidden knowledge. And she might harbor forbidden knowledge similar to Sele and Sin Mal harboring stigma. As for quantum in general, we can maybe follow the different states of quantum shadows. A superposed normal state, a vulnerable collapsed state, and the experimental-ish unknown state. Maybe Fosalors or her summon could be tankier on one state and do more damage but less tanky on the other. And her ultimate creates a state mixed with both defense and offense, maybe even with some healing and cleanse. An infinitely regenerating Archon that doesn't die because she keeps healing whatever damage she takes. Jenhar. Uh, this lovely character here is the self-proclaimed Hersher of the Sea, and who I first theorized to be the God of Justice. Her abilities are basically the same as the summons I've mentioned before. The looks change to the more Cthulhu-esque summons instead of the happy birds and squirrels. Maybe it's an ominous looking hand with a ton of eyes that do AoE damage at set intervals, or heal based on the damage they deal. Then Focolore's ultimate could unleash a wave of Hydro that pushes and damages enemies. Like the sea swallows everything, Fosalors' power consumes all. Next is Puppets, which I think could be a big part of Fosalors' kit. Considering how Fontaine is acting, everyone seems to be using everyone else for an ulterior motive. Maybe the story unfolds into Fosalor controlling everything from the start and even Arlecchino wasn't aware of it. Think of Yelan's skills but more on controlling other units or manipulating the field like how she actually does in her cinematics and not just shoot a bunch of lasers. Tenari's bomb which lets enemies attack each other but maybe Maybe this time their HP gets drained as long as her skill is still active. Or maybe summon puppets that have their own AI and take enemy aggro. So maybe Fosalors' kit revolves around this self-created team, and she can let the puppets do different things based on her elemental skills. Hold or press, the puppets could do different AoE attacks or do certain attacks that can't be staggered since they're all Hydro puppets. Imagine three or four puppets of Fosalors along with your character and hitting enemies. What would be cooler and kind of OP is if the puppets could mimic the movements of other characters, like say Diluc's elemental skills but it's Hydro, or Shang Ling's and Ayaka's ultimate but with less damage. So there you go, I hope you guys enjoyed the mad ramblings that I can't seem to get out of my head. For the outro people, comment below, is Fosalor gonna be an innocent brat or a complete psycho? Now, if you're curious of what Fontaine itself might have in store, then you should watch this next video here. I'm working on a bunch of other Fontaine-centered videos like Nouvellette, so stay tuned. Anyways, that's it from me, I'll see you guys in the next video, yeah? Like, comment if you enjoyed, subscribe and hit the bell for more of my ramblings, and stay mad theorists. Bye!